Hotel. Thank you. It's been a while since I've been back here in Atlanta. I miss you guys. It's, uh, good thanks to Lord. We love you too. We've been uh, sojourning and through some trials and we're coming full circle now because we're seeing the fruits of labor that we didn't think was ever going to be birthed. And you know what it's like, sisters, to be in labor and wishing this thing would just be over with the process so you can see the gift. Well, now I am just amazed after 35 years of being in the underground metaphysical community which I created in New York to see it literally explode like a nuclear bomb in consciousness. And it feels good to be able to speak language and people understand and understand what I'm saying. Because back in the days when I was talking to two or three people and even they thought I was crazy, <laughs> I had to get them into the language, which is what we're going to do today to decode and deconstruct exactly what's going on today so that our children, which is probably going to be told on, the, on the YouTube, will get reintroduced to me. Because everybody seeing me on YouTube now for the first time thinks that I'm a new jack <laughs> coming in there. And I just want to tell the young brothers and sisters of the YouTube generation that I'm old school, was out there with the revolutionaries, sat at the feet of the masters that preceded us. We were there, Sister Tassili, she knows, we were there in the trenches attempting to get this consciousness out to the brothers and sisters on a whole level level. We dealt with the nationalist community, but when I went to sit before the elders and asked them, when you teach us the history, could you please tell us a little something about the mystery? Because the mystery behind the history is what made our people great. What they were dealing with were the effects of our people's mystery system. So a lot of the elders were kind of remiss or a little recalcitrant to give us any information, especially Dr. Ben, Baba Ben, he wouldn't give us any information about that. Obviously thinking that we weren't ready. But I believe we were ready because I felt that I was ready. And I opened up the underground metaphysical community in New York for that purpose. To study the mystery. What made our people great. Not the acts of conquest and building pyramids, but what were the thought processes, the abstract consciousness that went into solving the mystery of how to put a pyramid together? What were they studying? Who were they studying? So we came about and we did that. This is just a little upgrade for the brothers and sisters, the young brothers and sisters wanting to know who I am and what I've been doing. Just bringing the mystery system or what we call the path of the hidden light. That's what it was called. It was no mystery system. It was called the path of the hidden light. And if you wanted to study more about the path of the hidden light, you would have to join our university online, where we teach online, in real time, around the world. In fact, we were the first to teach in real time, in cyberspace, to create a campus in cyberspace, to the point where our beloved Dr. Jeffries and I talked. He picked up that particular premise and went forward with it to deal with that way of teaching in Africa. So we teach in a cyber university called the University of Commission Sciences. We teach metapsychology. We teach naturopathy in hygienic sciences. And we teach the Menunetja, which is the ancient language that we are intent on making the second language of our children. <laughs> Because if you were to listen to the ancient Medunetja tongue, it sounds like Arabic. It sounds like all of the ancient tongues that are being spoken out there in amalgam. So when my children used to go to the, um, to the museums and listen to the tour guides telling them what was there, I had an eight year, nine year old boy correcting him. 
That's what we're talking about because our ancestors left that in the stone so that they can be read by our children and to reactivate what we're going to be speaking about, that consciousness, that download waiting to happen for our children. Because we are light beings, as you know, but we don't know how we're light beings and why we're light beings and why we have to have a memory jar. We have to kickstart the memory, the genetic memory, so we can start waking these people up. The children know it because they don't want to learn what you've been learning anymore in this education system. And I call it a education system because it's been putting our children to sleep, not waking them up. They're in coma right now. So what I wanted to do was to reference today, Professor Griffin and I got together first and foremost. I want to give a little thanks, uh, some thanks to, uh, where are all my materials now? Where are everybody steal my materials today? Everybody run off with me. First things first. First, I'd like to thank the drummers of the Duat. Come on, y'all, give it up for these fellas. Look at those three beautiful sisters, African Danza. Let me just read it off here, Brother Chosen, Brother King. Brother Palanji has been speaking. Uh, the Duat, founders of the Duat, KT and KB. Uh, the DVD, by the way, will be available at 1130 Euclid Avenue, Moo Productions. Uh, I want to give thanks to them, South, their Moo Productions, South. Black Dot, Steve, Canal, uh, Think Group Media, all of you all. And I would like to give thanks to Professor Griff because it was he and Brother KB that reached out to me for this event to take place. Professor Griffin and I talked for about a half hour about what we're going to call this particular event. So first thing he said was, stop playing. And I said, and being played. And it came up. So I put this particular, you know me, if you know anything about me, you know most of what I'm about to talk about is in the subtitle. And a lot of brothers and sisters who boot my tapes, and I'm saying it, they leave out the subtitles and change the names because sometimes it's a little too difficult. So some brothers call me, I'm saying, you got this tape called, I'm saying, I ain't never made no tape like that. Well, I saw it on the YouTube, I said they're changing the name to protect the guilty. <laughs> but I can't say anything about that because essentially, whatever it is that I have done to aid in the raising of the consciousness index of the planet, that's going to be what I've been here to do, stationed here to do, and that's it. Whatever recompense I get is not to me to enrich myself on somebody else's education. It don't make any sense. My richness and what I am going to be enriched by is the fact that I am being fed back by what it is that I am seeding. Just like I plant food, I will be able to be nourished by that because I may have to choose one of you all to come back through. So if I'm lying to you all, what am I doing except lying to myself? So I said, I'm going to call this Stop Playing and Being Played. Decloaking the mind fuck methodologies of the parasitic elite operating through gender, media, politics, and entertainment. All right, now see, a lot of people don't understand that when anybody comes to my, my, my lectures, you know, everybody says, oh, well, you know, if you could just say a few words without using certain expletives. <laughs> I've been expletiving my, all my life. And the thing about it is, I don't want everybody to be, because I could get college and, and very educated and talk nasal, just very sophisticated. I have very good education. I was beat to death in Catholic school, so you know I learned something. 
The thing is that when I want to express myself through passion, and if there's certain words that just kind of put a punctuation point on it, even though the elders would kind of cringe and I would not do that. So listen, I'm feeling free. If, the, if, the, if I want to punctuate like that, then I'm punctuating. Just to give you an understanding and understanding of what I mean. So we are decloaking the methodologies. And that, what I'm saying there, the mind fuck, that is a true and real title from the NSA, MK Ultra. These words were used. Operation Mindfuck. So I'm not saying anything that has not been put into history. Okay? Now, moving forward, first things first. Okay? First things first. I don't care how you dressing, how you are pimping, how you laying, how you are styling and profiling, you are not a player. <laughs> We're going to begin a little softly today so that we can get the young people to understand what time it is. You are not a player. You cannot be a player because you are the plague. Clowns dress up to perform for you. And most of the brothers that are playing at the bling end of rap are clowns. When hip hop came out in the beginning, it was a harmonic of what we had left in the nationalist community, in the angst community, I call it, in the angry part of our people, this is what hip hop was. It was to bring joy, but to maintain and continue the message. But we will see that it has been co-opted and we are going to examine the methodologies for that co-option. And it's for the children because you have made, you maybe have heard me speak about this earlier and put the science together, but maybe the children that are now going to listen to this have not heard it put quite this way. And I needed to incorporate a few things so that we would be very clear. This is from a movie, and I know maybe most of you all have seen that movie, and they are doing a remake of it, but I wish, I, I know I'm going to go and see it. Because when this came out in the movies, I went to see it on the second day. On the fourth day, they took it off. They took it off out of the movies. Why? Because at the time, they had glasses, cobalt glasses, that, that uh, Polaroid had put out. And there was a recall of 386,000 Polaroid new glasses made out of a cobalt lens. You see, no matter what you think, there are harmonics and frequencies that are right now working with certain words that are being transported through the air, though you think you can't hear it with your conscious mind. Every part of you right now is processing these words. Kill. Fuck. I will. Party. These words are trigger mechanisms, and you're going to see it as we get deeper into how the, 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 the techniques and the methodologies are working. As we work to find out where we came from and what's going on, the first thing you must understand is that there is no game. There is no game. Only the delusion you've been given to concentrate on and to participate in. We think there's a game because they made us believe there's a game by setting up the synchronicity of a quote-unquote game. Your participation is the agreement 
And it is the mortar and the cement that solidifies the reality. You begin to see how in the simplest ways that we use language, we are solidifying that delusion into our reality. But we must first understand that there is no gain. I know it's going to say it right away. It's the game. I'm out here. We out here to play it and to win it. We out here to do this. To... No, there ain't. There is no game. It is what you've been molded to believe is real. You are playing in an illusion. There is no game. There is only control. There is only control. How? Because no matter what it is you think or what position on the field you think you're playing in, you are exercising your activities within a controlled and confined environment of activity. Anything you do is controlled. Everything that you think of is put into your head. Anything you've reacted to was to react to what they gave you to react to, and that in itself is a form of control. So when they start whipping on us, or they start shooting brothers and sisters in the neighborhood, and they get your reaction, let's go march. Control. Unless you have destroyed the power that has persecuted you, you march, burn down a few houses, talk about you got civil rights, if you have not destroyed the system that was in place, all you've done is make it stronger. So now they know everything that you're going to do for next time. And the same people are in charge. There is no game. There is only control. Overstand and understand that Operation Mindfuck is actually the manipulation of inevitability. When you have a place and a point you want the herd to end up, you manipulate the herd in such a way so that they will inevitably follow the track that will bring them to your inevitability. So if I were to fertilize the environment that I want to herd the cattle in, I have to fertilize the inevitability to attract you to it. I create a goal, sell the goal, and give you the path by which you go to buy it or buy into it. These words that we're going to be using are essentially words necessary for you to start decoding the words in your head because even the taint loop of conversation with yourself is in a language that doesn't belong to you. Therefore, you are perpetrating and perpetuating your enslavement through the semantics of your lockdown. So understand that even when you talk to yourself, you talk to yourself like a slave. Because as you speak that language, Holographically, you are only focused into what they put as the reality to describe that with the semantics they gave you. Can your semantics give you a reality outside of the confines of where you are? When you go to describe a phenomenon and you have to use the English language, how do you Describe and bring that phenomena into your reality if you can't find the words. Oh, we're going to get a little deep today. Go ahead. Go ahead. Understand that there are four principles that these people use. And don't worry about it, brothers and sisters, if you can't see it directly. The tape is going to be there. Brother is definitely taking it down. I told him. That this is the most important thing right now. In our school, we teach that there are four aspects to lockdown. One is the orchestration of the speculation. You orchestrate the speculation. Psychogenic inducement. 
preemptive consent and synthetic or counterfeit synchronicity. These are words you better get used to because these are the semantics of the lockdown that you are presently participating in. We're going to break them down. We're going to let you know how to see when they're playing Operation Mindfuck okay. on you. Okay. Orchestrating the speculation. What is a speculation from somebody in the audience? Give me the definition that your master told you was the new meaning for speculation. Good. Someone else said an assumption. Well, is it reality, an assumption? Well, if I know how to orchestrate the assumption, I orchestrate your reality. If your assumptions are premeditated and placed there by the matter-of-fact reality that your mother and father handed down to you, and the matter-of-fact day-to-day -day reality that the education system gives to you, what else but you are byproducts of a manipulated speculation? And that speculation can give birth to so many branches of bullshit realities. Right, right. And every time one of us catches up with it to let the brothers and sisters know they create another branch. So the speculation starts becoming like an amoeba. It starts reproducing. Psychogenic inducement. Psycho, meaning mind. Genic, meaning body at the essential level. Inducement, what does that mean? To seduce you to get you into it. Psychogenic inducement means if I want your mind, I have to mess with your genetics. So to induce your mind to think a specific way or to not think in a specific way, I have to mess with you by inducing your genetics with poisons. Therefore, I destroy the four fundamental anchors and the four fundamental foundations to existence, fire, air, water, and earth, which constitutes the W-O-R-D of God. That's right. Once I have hold of the W-O-R-D of God at the essential level in the form of the fire, air, water, and earth, I am dealing with the activities of the alchemic principles of God. Yeah. Therefore, I'm messing with the word not only in the elemental planes, but in the semantic planes as well, where your brain operates. So, psychogenic inducement is destroying your body by polluting the water, polluting the air, changing the genetics of your food, because remember, in 2000, at the Gathering of the Masters, I said that eating is a form of communication. That when you eat the proper foods, the genetics in the food are translating as well as transmitting information that nature mother is passing on to you from the psycho-spiritual plane. And when nature mother is passing on information to you from the psycho-spiritual planes, you know just what the fuck to do if there was a tsunami coming over your ass. You'd have been gone. The animals know it. They don't step outside of their instinctive behavior. You do. So now they must destroy that organic connection between you and the earth mother so that when, she, when you are ripped from her breast, there is no more communicating between her. Because remember, as the earth, she's picking up star code, light, light conditions, light code conditions that she is now using to entrain within the earth so that whatever the earth produces becomes information carried on and passed on to you. So I have to destroy your genetics. When I destroy your genetics, 
I destroy you and your higher consciousness and your ability to achieve higher consciousness because the only way your physical body can process higher consciousness is if your cells are healthy. If you're eating seedless grapes, if you're eating seedless watermelons, how in the hell do you know you're eating a watermelon or grapes? You know that the seed bears the fruit. And if it has no seed, there is no information passed on to the fruit. Frankenfood, they used to call it. Preemptive consent. I do things to make you think things are real, so therefore you believe it's real, and I get you to think this way, and you will preemptively consent to whatever that reality tells you to do. I will preempt you even having an ability to sit down and decipher, because by automatic reflex, since everybody else is doing it, we got the thousand monkey, the, 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 the hundredth monkey syndrome going on. Synthetic synchronicity. Synchronicity is something that Freud and uh, the Jung and the rest of these bastards, which you're going to get to learn about, set up. Because they, they, they set it up so that once you are synchronized into thinking and believing a certain way, I can synthetically create a condition that makes you believe it's real, and you walk along that path and see signs that are not there, based on what I made you believe is real. So these four concepts, which I have not yet gotten really deep into in school, in the classes, we get much deeper into them. You get an idea of where they work from. These are the four foundations to how they perpetuate Operation Mindfuck. When you understand that the, this, this cabal called the Illuminati is dealing from a place of mind control. Come on. Because they can't physically control every human on the planet. That's why they want to crop two to three billion over the next ten years. And I would say to the mothers and and, and, and parents out there, be mindful because come August, September, and October, there will be a campaign to put the poison needle to work. Vaccinate your children against a bullshit disease that does not exist, that was created, but if your healthy body has the ability to have a runny nose, to cough, sneeze, and go through a fever, you can get rid of it. Because sickness and illness and disease is health. Understand it. When you have a disease, that is the body's divine mechanism for bringing you back into equilibrium, or ma'at. We look at it in the paradigm of the oppressor and the perpetrator and the parasitic elite. We look at it the way they want us to look at it so that they can continue to attack us. But by the time you get an effect on the surface of your body, your body was already two weeks in the process of cleaning and eliminating the garbage. By the time you get a cold or a sniffle, those are the tertiary and quaternary stages of your disease. The real disease started below the threshold of your reality or, or your even knowledge. Now as we move and understand how the Illuminati plays at mind control, you will understand that there are techniques of the parasitic elite or what we entities who we call quote unquote God's children, but there are second order entities that live like parasites off your fear, your anguish, everything that you kick off as humanly possible. Human reactions give off energies and radiations. And there are parasites, energy parasites that suck and feed on that. That's why you have so many children disappearing, because children's fear is almost like sweet candy and ice cream to them. So what you have now, essentially, in the Illuminati's uh, lexicon of control are some of the other words, or the or words that dovetail from the original four. So what we will deal with is what we call the uh, auric vampirism, which is what they call sacrifice. So anytime they start dealing with going to war, that's collective auric sacrifice. 
Whenever there is a war and there is people dying, there is a release of enormous amounts of energies that they feed from. And I know it sounds crazy, but understand we haven't even scratched the surface of what's really going on in our reality today. We have what is known as virtual experience entrainment. You are all vicarious experiencer of the realities that we are dealing with. We live a vicarious experience and we will speak about that. We are talking about belief inducement, second intentions, we're talking about invented impediments, reality as only a description, preemptive consent, we're dealing with distorted nomenclature, we're dealing with cult of personality and false dichotomy. These words are essentially some of the tactics the psychological, very subtle tactics being used by the parasitic elite to keep us in light code lockdown. Again, there is no game. There is only control. You are being controlled. And when you go home, I would suggest that you look around your house to see what it is that keeps you plugged into the matrix and see what it is that you are dependent upon See what it is that makes you feel that you can't do without. Besides the food that you become addicted to, which is really not food because real food doesn't addict. Right. We'll say that again. Only poisonous foods can addict you. You cannot be addicted to an apple. <laughs> The only way you can be addicted is if something poisons you, and with that poison, the poison takes something from you, creating a deficit in your body, which your body then aches for. That's how crack works. Brothers and sisters, we are being engineered genetically, socially, sexually, and psychologically to serve the parasitic elite of the Illuminati. They have undermined institutions like marriage and the archetypal family, culture, and spiritually and spirituality to promote depravity, dysfunction, corruption, and division. They have orchestrated two world wars and are planning a third before 2012. Understand, everyone, that we are essentially exactly in as Brother Common have the common sense to say we are essentially in a lockdown. And that lockdown gives us certain energies that we think comforts us into believing that we have everything working for us. But everything inside of that reality is telling us to do everything contrary to our spiritual development. They're doing everything they can to dismantle what you would organically see by your self-organic uh, um, uh, resurrection or development or enhancement and ascension. So Common said something very interesting. Common said, universal mind control. And that's where we are. They said that they want to deal with universal mind control. So in this mind control uh, uh, think tank that we're going to be dealing with, we're going to be breaking down a few of the ways that it happens. Now the first thing we got to do is to go through the history. You got to know who it is that's been working so that you can recognize the names. And then when you get the names, you go and you do your investigation. See, I'm not just giving you this to you to see, okay, well, well, Valentine says something. No, you get your ass going, check out the data that's relevant to you, and get busy to find out what it is, what it's going to mean in your life, and do something about it. People come here because they're information addicts. They like to hear the information so they can talk about it around the water pool. And guess what I heard? <laughs> this is not for gossip. This is not gossip. First things first, these are some of the different tactics of universal mind control. We've heard of MK Ultra, but we haven't heard about Monarch and Project Superman. Project Superman is what they're using in the military right now as we speak. 
psychotronics and ELF microwave, virtual experience entrainment, psychogenics, subliministics, neuromapping, psyops, diops, microchip implants, ELF weaponry, chemtrails, and drugs. And drugs, by drugs, I mean not the ones that you put into your vein, not the ones you snort up, not the ones you be toting. I'm talking about what you eat. Because addictions come in the form of what they tell you is food as well. And they gotta addict you because it's a business. You gotta go back and keep eating it. Now, Universal mind control, who, where, when it all began, how, where, why it was perfected. Let's get some of the people involved with who this is. Johann Goth wrote, none are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. Now, white man said something very potent. And I think it don't matter who it came from. Makes sense to me, because I know some Negroes who really believe that they're free. We had hundreds of millions of them actually going out there talking about being free. And you know, just to dovetail off of what you said, good brother, about this Obama drama that the, the, the black folks got sucked into. I did a whole thing on Obama. I warned you all about him in 2005. How many people heard my death march video? And I told you, watch out for that Negro, because he was Illuminati. But of course, only a few people heard it. Then when I came out and started talking about him being Malcolm's son, everybody just went crazy. I said, I, I, just, I said he looked like Malcolm. So here, I was just going to do the forensics and make you judge him. Now they got him as Akhenaten, returned. Because you know they're up there digging in, in Kemet for a reason. They're giving them genetics because their genetics are dying out. They hit zero population back in 1994. And they need to use the cream of the crop genetics. Okay? So, none are so blind and hopelessly enslaved than those who believe they are free. A man by the name of Edward Bernays wrote a book called Propaganda, and this is how mind control works today, beloved brothers and sisters. We are governed, our minds molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men who have never, we have never heard of. Whatever attitude one chooses to take toward this condition, it remains a fact that in almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, our social conduct or our, so our ethical thinking, we are dominated by a relatively small number of persons, a trifling fraction of our 120 million who understand the mental processes and social patterns of the masses. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind and who harness all social forces huh, and continue new ways to bind and to guide the world. This is not a joke. This is not frivolous. There are people working your minds from back then. There is a book out called Public Opinion. You need to make it part of your uh, library. Why? Because it's from this book that they began to show all the ways that the Illuminati started to control paradigm. In 1922, a man named Walter Lippmann, the first to translate who Sigmund Freud's works into English, was to become one of the most influential of political commentators. He spent World War I at the British Psychological Warfare and Propaganda Headquarters in Wellington House, working with a group that includes Freud's nephew, Edward Bernays. From his book, Public Opinion, published one year after Freud's mass psychology, he defined the term public opinion as, quote, the pictures inside the heads of human beings. The pictures of themselves, of others, of their needs and purposes and relationships. These are their public opinions. Those pictures which are acted upon by groups of people or by individuals acting in the name of groups are public opinion with a capital letter. So essentially, anything you think about 
that you think you have to think about or you can't help think about is public opinion they put in your head. And they do things to you so that you would react so that now you've created a whole other loop in your head that becomes your new public opinion. You get locked down by thinking them as more powerful, them having more than you, them enslaving you. If you were to drop everything now and not buy a damn thing for the next week, he would shrivel up and die, blow away. You talk about a, a day of absence. Unless you learn to fast, purify, or know where to eat grass, you ain't coming out. You ain't bringing this beast down. And ain't no guns going to do it because they're waiting for you to get the guns. In fact, they'll bring it to you. You ain't organized. You ain't ready for war. And the thing is, war got to start in chaos. There is no leader that if anybody comes up as a leader, they've been picked. Understand that if a leader can actually go out and take a, a public forum and get TV time, <laughs> understand that there are leaders that can do that, but they are under the, the deepest scrutiny and will be taken out like that. Understand that your leader and the war and the revolution will happen in a spark, just like lightning hitting dry brush. It's not going to be something, okay, all right, your brothers go over there, and we'll be over there. We'll call you on the cell phone when time to attack. <laughs> it's not going to work. It has to come from a mob of people bone rushing the halls of authority, destroying the halls of authority. Thanks, brother. And a leader coming out of that is a real leader. But you see, anything that begins has a birth, a time of a fruit, and a corrupting time. And anything you create will be corrupted. That's the nature of things in third density. And that's the part of the mystery system that was not taught to us. The only way we have to get uh, uh, to, to, to beat this thing is to understand how the Chemites did their, did their science of incorruptibility. If we don't understand the signs of incorruptibility, we put people in there that will lead us into corruption. And when you have leaders who are corrupt, then the society is doomed. Because the people need to overthrow corruption. They need to put people in there. When you're a leader, you have, you are, your mind belongs to the people and the people are your mind. If you have an isolated agenda from the people, then you're no leader. You're a dictator. And this is exactly what it is we have today. People who dictate the bullshit to us. He also said that Lippmann further showed that people are more than willing to reduce complex problems into simplistic formulas. So when you get a problem, you want somebody to give it to you in a little spoon so that you can say, okay, that's it? Okay, I can handle that. You don't want to work it out for yourself. You don't want to get into the mind necessary to bring out a solution, huh? To form their own opinions of what they believe others around them believe. Hmm? Truth becomes optional. Appearance of reports in the media further give the aura of reality to those stories. If it wasn't real, why would it be reported? Also, people whose frame is built up by the media, such as movie stars and recording artists, can become opinion leaders with as much power to sway public opinion as political figures themselves. This is ultimately determined by the desires and the wishes of an elite social set. That set is a quote, powerful, socially superior, successful, rich, urban social set, which is fundamentally international throughout the Western Hemisphere, and in many ways, London is its center, as Brother said. Okay, you have to get these little fundamentals so you can understand where we're going. It counts among its membership the most influential people in the world, containing as it, as it does the diplomatic sets, high finance, the upper circles of the army and the navy, the princes of the church, the great newspaper proprietors, their wives, mothers, and the daughters who wield the scepter of invitation. So the women of the upper class are the ones who say, no, we don't invite them. 
I don't like them. Let's bring them in and they come in there with a basket and give them the notoriety. So when the Negroes go up there and they start brushing hands, oh man, I went over there to meet uh, 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 what's his name? I shook hands with George Bush and I'm skinning and grinning and shaking hands with Obama and oh, we're doing prayers with Obama and all this bullshit. And the information about Obama being a bisexual comes out. Don't tell nobody. I mean, nobody can tell you about that shit. That's why. That's why the homosexuals bum rushed him and made him sign that, or else we want to out your ass. That's why he did it. Because the pictures of him and a few and, 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 and a minister that uh, the, the, a priest or a minister who will name. Uh, remain unnamed, hugging and kissing them. And, and, uh, we won't go into that right now. <laughs> Public opinion must therefore be organized for the press, not by the press. Also, it is not sufficient to rely on the whims of a super social set to manipulate the pictures in the people's head. That job can only be managed by a specialized class which operates through our intelligence bureaus. This is in public opinion. He goes on to say the masses of absolutely illiterate, feeble-minded, grossly neurotic, undernourished, and frustrated individuals is very considerable. Much more considerable there is reason to think than we generally suppose. Thus, a wide popular appeal can be circulated among persons who are mentally children or barbarians, whose lives are a morass of entanglements, people whose vitality is exhausted, shut in people, and the people whose experience comprehended no factor in the problem under discussion. In other words, you are useless eaters, as he says, you are the sheeple, you are cattle, and everything you do, you do based on desperation. So they can manipulate you. All you have to do is manipulate your, des your desperation and your fear, and they got you running because 9 11 is coming again. 9 11 is coming again. Now, the plan to create public opinion bad in 1913, isn't that certain? That's interesting. The plan to mold, it came about at the same time when they began to start establishing, establishing the. Uh, um, the, uh, the Federal Reserve, the IRS. Hmm? This is when it started as a propaganda factory centered in Wellington House in London. Lord Edward Bray, the British Foreign Secretary at the time, installed Alfred Harmsworth, Lord Northcliffe, Britain's most influential newspaper magnate, hmm, as its director. Lord Northcliffe's position was oversighted by Lord uh, Rothmere on behalf of the British Crown. The operational staff of Wellington House consisted of Lord Northcliffe, Arnold Thornby, future director of the studies of the Royal Institute of International Affairs, and the Americans Walter Lippmann and Edward Bernays. Incidentally, it was Lord Rothmere who put this whole thing together who said, who introduced the term Adolf the Great. He stated that he was a supreme intellect. I have known only two other men to whom I, I, I could apply such distinction, Lord, Lord Northcliffe and Lord George. If one puts a question to Hitler, he gives an immediate, brilliant, clear answer. There's no human being living whose promise on important matters I would trust more readily. Look very carefully. These are the perpetrators of your reality today. Funding was initially approved or provided by the royal family, hmm, but soon included the Rothschilds related to Lord Northcliffe by marriage and the Rockefellers. In 1921, after the propaganda victories in the First World War and the Federal Reserve banking system created in 1913 had been secured, Wellington House expanded to become Tavistock Institute of Human Relations. Get that word and learn it well. Tavistock Institute. That is the center of all mind control for the planet. Tavistock Institute. This sidewall apparatus based outside of London was first established under the patronage of Duke George of Kent. The original Tavistock Clinic, led by George Rawlin Reese, was developed as the psychological warfare center for the royal family and British intelligence. 
Reese and a cabal of Freudian. I want you to understand how deeply Freud is in this thing called mind control. What he did to participate and to create the paradigm. Neo-Freudian psychiatrists applied the wartime experiences, watch this, the wartime experiences of psychological collapse to create theories of how such conditions of breakdown could be artificially induced absent the actual theaters of war. The result was a theory of mass brainwashing involving group experience that would be used to alter the values of individuals and through that induce over time changes in the axiomatic assumptions governing a given society. So what they would do now is change the underpinnings of your re relative reality by introducing axioms, words, for you to become comfortable with, so that when you hear them, you know what they belong to, you begin to cross-reference them in the holographic mind that you have, and your reality now becomes this crisscross reference that you see through, and that's all that you see. Okay, hang on with me. It's gonna get a little complicated, but you have to have this. Now this elite cabal was staffed by the likes of Kurt Lewin, the author, or who authored Jim Keith, the guy who was called himself Commander X, who just died, credits with much of the original Tavistock research into brainwashing, applying the results of repeated trauma and torture of individuals in mind control to the society at large. Lewin states, this is carefully, if terror can be induced on a wide set basis into a society, then society reverts to a tabula rasa, a blank slate, a situation where control can easily be instituted from an external point. Put another way, by the creation of control chaos, the populace can be brought to a point where it willingly submits to greater control. Or it's not, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of our diabolical mystic guns. Another time of stock researcher was Dr. William Sargent, author of Battle for the Mind, a, psycho, a, a, physio, a physiology of conversion and brainwashing. These are books for you to go get. He said, various types of beliefs can be implanted after brain function has been sufficiently disturbed by deliberately inducing fear, anger, and excitement. Aldrius Huxley, how many people have heard of him? Aldrius Huxley, he wrote Brave New World and Doors of Perception. He said, assemble a mob of men and women previously conditioned by daily reading of newspapers, treat them to amplify band music, light, bright lights, and the oratory of a demagogue who, as demagogues always are, is simultaneously the exploiter and the victim of herd intoxication, and in next to no time, you can reduce them to a state of almost mindless subhumanity. These are people writing this in their universities to pass on to their own control people. All that crap that you see here, you know, yes we can. See, I needed a tape recorder, a cassette tape recorder, to show you what that word, yes we can, means. All right, now that we have one, I'm going to show it to you. Did you put it? Did you put it inside there, right? No. Um, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Did you? Um, you have the tape? Ah, got it. Now, does this have a speaker? Now, I want you to hear. Go 
go on until. Oh, somebody popped the chain. All right, sir. <laughs> Moving right along. Another man in, 18, in 1938, at the time he was the head of the music section of radio, the radio research project for Tavistock, Theodore Adorno wrote in his, his work, Negative Dialectics, that, listens to, uh, that listeners to radio music programs, listen, fluctuate between comprehensive forgetting and sudden dives in recognition. They are atomistically, and they listen atomistically and disassociate from what they hear. They are not childlike, but they are childish. Their primitivism is not that of the underdeveloped, or developed, but that of the forcibly retarded. Forcibly retarded, when they put certain music on the air for you to hear, know that they have messed with it in the studio. To mess with you, I don't care how popular the music is or unpopular, if it's popular and you got the Britney Spears and all these people out there, know that they have mind fucked the music so that when you're listening to it, you're listening to it not only in reverse, but up and down and sideways. The technology is such that they can put reverse in there and you can hear it with your holographic mind. Your holographic mind will hear things in reverse. As I was explaining to someone, when a baby is talking to you around the age of about five to six months and babbling at you, and you hear certain words that sound like words, if you were to tape your child and play the tape backwards, you would hear them speaking the words to you. Children speak in reverse. Children hear what you say, but they hear it in reverse because their mind is still in the consciousness realms. And they're hearing it holographically, and since they have not yet learned how to decode it with their part of the hologram, the hologram that was necessarily infused with enough information for them to be able to reverse it back so it makes sense, they're speaking to you from another realm and repeating what you say on this realm in reverse. Okay, is it backwards? Is it up? Is the volume up? Okay, it might be. They say TV made this its formal public appearance at 1939 World's Fair. Is that it? Yes, we can. Okay, all right, here we go. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Now stop. And you say. Listen, listen. And you say. And you say. And you say. And you say. Wait. And you say. You hear what they're saying? American dream. Yes, we can. Okay, wait a minute now. Let's hear it again. Let's, let's hear it again because some people might not want to think and might not want to accept what they heard. Now, all of you Negroes out there, all of you Christians who was all for Obama, you don't realize who he is. This son of a bitch <laughs> has been playing you, and he's suave. The boy looked good. It's the first thing I heard from the sisters. Oh, he looked good. Boy, look good. He dressed. Boy, he looked clean. Look at his clothes. He's become a superstar. 
They got people in Korea voting for the presidency over here. <laughs> Koreans wanting him to be president. Because, as, as Brother said, Barack Obama is the first leader of the New World Order. The first elected president of the New World Order. Understand that the, that the chant they gave you so that the rest of the world would say it is not a regular chant that they would give you. These people study how to use reverse speech to give praises to their creator or their master. Check again. Yes, we can. 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 Thank you, Steve. 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 I rest my case. <laughs> Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. Now, all the people that hate me because they love Barack Obama, as they hate everybody who don't like him because he's black. He ain't black. As he done told you, like Tiger Woods, I ain't black. I'm a mixture and I'm a mutt. So I say this, you know, I'm looking at a black man up there who say he ain't black, and I'm looking at white women going crazy. Nuts, because Obama, and he's suave and debonair, you know, he walks up there. <laughs> and you know, they have made, they put Holly Duty in there beforehand. They put a retarded, brain dead, monarch mind control creature in there to completely set it off. Now you got a debonair man coming in looking clean. Who you gonna pick? You know, I mean, it, it, was, it was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer. And now we're gonna understand what mechanisms were behind that. I took this from a clipping about this dude. His name was Hal Becker. And he was a consultant for the Futures Group who used to give information to CBS, NBC, and all the big stations on how to promote products to the people. Said, I know the secret of making the average American believe anything I want him to. Just let me control television. You put something on the television that it becomes reality. If the world outside the TV set contradicts the images, people start trying to change the world to make it like the TV set images. Okay? And we move along. Television is the United States of Consciousness. Television equals the United States of Consciousness. Because that's what they do. They organize your consciousness so that when they put out something on the TV and you see a commercial, everybody can identify because everybody has seen it your consciousness has been entrained. But here's something deep. Something called the 24th, 25th shot was found in Pokemon, and I think you already know about this. Psychologists in the Russian southern city of Krasnoma called, uh, called on the Russian government to ban television Pokemon, televising Pokemon. Many other countries, including Japan itself, have tabooed it. Krasnodar psychologists assert that a 25th shot strobe light system is applied in the cartoon that negatively affects children's subconscious. As a result of this strobe, strobe dosing, a neuro-linguistic programming occurs, or to put it more succinctly, a zombifying effect. The psychologists characterize this phenomenon as intellectual genocide. Moving right along, we haven't really scratched the surface. The Reese Network spent all of World War I studying the effects of war psychosis and its breakdown of individual personality. From their work, a wicked thesis emerged. Through the use of terror, 
they found that man can be reduced to a childlike and submissive state in which his powers of reason are clouded and in which his emotional response to various situations and stimuli can become predictable or in Tavistock, Tavistockian terms, proliferable. By controlling the levels of anxiety, it is possible to induce a similar state in large groups of people whose behavior can then be controlled and manipulated by the oligarchic forces for whom Tavistock worked. Now, an authoritative expose of this called the greatest brainwashing organization to ever exist in the course of human is revealed in Dr. John Coleman's latest book entitled The Tavistock Institute of Human Relations, Shaping the Moral, Cultural, Political, and Economic Decline of the United States of America. This man was former British intelligence. This is the book you need to get, The Tavistock Institute of Human Relations. Those of you interested in mind control and the technology behind it. In another of his 15 books entitled The Committee of 300, he writes that the aim of the parasitic elite is to gain unilateral control of the earth and that part of their working strategy has been, quote, to weaken the moral fiber of nations and to demoralize workers in the labor chaos classes by creating mass unemployment. Is that what we got now? As jobs dwindle due to the post-industrial zero growth policies introduced by the Club of Rome, the report envisage, envisages demoralized and discouraged workers resorting to alcohol and drugs. And everybody's got a depression drug somewhere. The youth of the land, listen carefully, the youth of the land will be encouraged by means of rock music and drugs to rebel against the status quo, thus undermining and eventually destroying the family unit. In this regard, the committee commissioned Tavistock Institute to prepare a blueprint as, we have, uh, as to how this could be achieved. We move on to find out Tavistock directed research, Sanford Research, to carry out the work under the direction of Professor Willis Harmon, President Institute of the Noetic Sciences. This work later became known as the Aquarian's Conspiracy. Listen carefully. An FBI internal memo from 1968 mentions the employment of a perpetually touring rock group called the Grateful Dead. All right? And rebellion into more of benign, non-threatening directions. They hired the Grateful Dead. They performed a virtual service, a vital service, in distracting many young persons into drugs and mysticism rather than into politics. Now, anybody has ever seen this particular symbol of the Grateful Dead? Did anybody ever know what it means? Okay? Can somebody tell me what these symbols mean? Well, first and foremost, okay, that's just in case. Well, let me just explain something to you. This is Hiram Abiff. The top hat is the top hat of, for all you masons in the house, the worshipful master. The lightning bolt represents the Nazis, the SS. But then, what you don't understand and understand is that the lightning bolt has 13 edges. The 13 royal families. You don't understand as well that the red and the blue is the red and the blue houses of masonry. York House, the red, and the Scottish Rites in the blue. There is no game! There is no game. There is only control. And I put her in there constantly because this is one witch. You have to understand that there was a kissing going on. You saw the kissing crew when she was kissing on uh, what's her name? That was a ritual. Christina Aguilera as well as Britney Spears. She was cut, she came down in the top hat. The hat of the worshipful master. Madonna. Keep going. Stealing children from Africa. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Same, the same, you know, you know, that's one of our, that's our graveyard, uh, uh, Arisha. Moving right along. 
You got to hear about parade. Ho! Hey! Ho! Hey! Ho! Hey! Ho! Hip hop parade! You remember those days? We went from hip hop parade. Huh? You recognize the faces? Cool hurt? Oh my goodness, who's that? Rakim? Sister Soldier? Immortal technique, y'all need to get into that, brother. And of course, Dead Press. Hmm? And Griff. And Nas, when he want to be. And most deaf. That's when it was hip hop hooray. But now it's hip hop proceed. Hypocrisy essentially birthed a whole other paradigm. <laughs> Hypocrisy destroyed the holographic pathways that were being made by hip hop array. Because who, remember, is not just who ray, it's who was the first word spoken into existence. So when I say hip hop, who, ray, a ra, we're talking about a time when the words were happy words, but they were also words that were uplifting us. They were giving us a purpose, and we were marking out our own inevitability by it. Remember, we spoke about, huh? pre-orchestrating inevitability? Well, they had to put in hypocrisy to divert those energies and to use your lens, as you will see later, your lens to deal with decoding light frequencies that put you into this bullshit here. And this is the most popular form of hip-hop today. Why? Because this beast that I showed you first is the one who is pushing it. Why do you think these Negroes can be going around styling and profiling? Who's giving them their money? You think they earning that? Do you think that this jackass really put the company together called Sean John? Do you think this nigga with the capital N really is doing something for the general black population to uplift them and their consciousness? He is a front, a meat puppet, with no hands up his ass, moving his mouth. <laughs> and this brother came out last to make sure you were reinforced to believe that there was a... Told you, there is no game. But when you began to know there was no game, they said, wait a minute, no, we got to make them, we got to remind them this again. So you're going to call yourself the game. And of course, my poor deluded sister here. The last time I saw a woman like this was when I was helping delivering a child. Not inviting the world to come over and start, you know, pleasuring themselves psychologically. And this goddamn word has become part of the lexicon. And we're going to get into that too. So we deal with hip hop. I don't call it hip hop. I call the bullshit that they put out there with this little Wayne hip hop. And you go and you look at the word hop in the American dictionary, it means what? To pawn, but it also means a prison pen. And don't you got to have your street creds before you have, you got to have this shot twice. No, shot twice. Mine's a spot because I got shot six times. What kind of criteria is that? Unless you got shot by the police or you were shot in some kind of guerrilla action for your people. Right. To pawn 
a prison pen, to hawk is to trick, to deceive, chicanery, to fool or deceive, a hoax, to infuse food or drink with a drug. Hip-hop is a psyop. Hip-hop is a die-op. It's been killing your consciousness. It's been warping your children's reality. Physically, mentally, spiritually. And you don't see the creature behind it. The one you got to put on your cobalt glasses to see. The one that has our poor sisters actually believing that they get more beautiful with this. In my book, The Wounded Wound, I talk about Latifah and what happened to the Queen Latifah and how symbolically they showed you her burning off her crown. And when she burned off her crown, then all of a sudden now she has this deficient hairstyle. Notice too that we went from this. The gods descended. See, when I hear Earth, Wind, and Fire, be pissed off. I'm telling you, I could be angry, mad, dejected. I mean, I could be in the worst state of mind. And I pop that back thing that's big and that thing goes Right? Do you remember? Oh, man! I say, yes, I do! And all of a sudden, I'm all right! and fire were gods. Funny looking. Had weird clothes. I loved it. But Maurice never deviated from the message. And he always wore clothes and he always put symbols so that your mind could constantly see where the fuck you need to be. Even if you don't know anything, if you just passing by and you look at the album, immediately your genetic memory got switched on. They were the music gods. This was the last time the music was ours. This is the last time the spiritual energies were being infused into the music. Our theme song for our university is In the Stone. Mm -hmm. True love is written in the stone. Mm -hmm. And did you hear the fanfare at the beginning of that? I'm getting chill. I want to dance now. I want to dance <laughs> now. Right now. These brothers, to me, and I had a chance to meet with them, and I met Maurice at the, uh, the uh, Tree of Life in New York. And it was like he was in there reading and I was in there reading and he talked a little bit to me and I said, oh man, and that's back when they were doing their thing with, um, uh, what was that? Uh, oh, he had just done the uh, uh, one with uh, Ramsey Lewis, Sun Goddess. So these are, look at this. I mean, look at this. Look at that. This is what we're doing now. This is where he was in the 70s. In the 70s, this brother was there. And so now here we are. We are here. We have seen what the mountain looks like and what the next mountain should be. So now we turn to the rap community. And we ask the number one rapper with all the words that we see of earth, wind, and fire, with all the music and the covers that we see, that was left for us as breadcrumbs along the trail of consciousness. 
When we ask the number one rapper, the one everybody knows, the one everybody loves, what do you put out on your album to make sure that you follow the knowledge? What do you do to contribute? Well, I'll tell you what I'll name it. Let's call it, without hoes, life would be fucked up. <laughs> Remember, this is the number one rapper, the number one musician in music. Without hoes, life would be fucked up. Now this is what your children are hearing. I want you to marinate with that for a moment. After listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire, to uh, who else we got that was back there doing the thing? War, Roy Ayers, Stevie Wonder, Fela Ransom, Ari, Ari Gulapo, Sun Ra. Yes, well, Gil Scott, yeah, he was all right in the beginning when he was, before he dove into the bottle. <laughs> Love them too. Co train. You know, but here we are now. Without hoes, life would be fucked up. That's where we've sunk to. That's where our life is right now. The only one holding it down. The only one holding it down. My brother, Africa Van Buck. This brother is the only one I see in the rap community donning the habiliments of his ancestors to make sure that the mindset in his brothers and sisters all are passed on. Okay? So he sees and he promotes and he makes sure that this is what you see. And the thing about it is, it's because of his influence we see like Brother uh, Griff, that brothers are going to the, the um, from the hip-hop community, are going to YouTube to even fish out the information. Because this is an archetypal symbol. It goes straight to the consciousness. Right to the consciousness. There is no game. There is no game. You are trapped in a vicarious experience entrainment hologram you are trapped in a vicarious experience entrainment hologram what the hell does that mean Lord Valentine it means that you don't have any first hand experiences the only first hand experiences you have essentially are with the immediate people that you talk to the immediate people you make love to the food that you eat and the TV that you watch, which is secondhand experience. You do not put your hands out to do anything that any of the people in media or in music are doing. You do not do what they do. You live through them. There is no game. You are living in a vicarious experience. Everybody is living in a vicarious experience and I wanted to use this because guess what? They used LeBron James, who I have no respect for, by the way. Everybody loves him because he's just this dynamic player. But you could be a hollow automaton and play basketball. That's a function. It's not the medal of the man. The media builds him up like he's a man. But he has said and done things for the dollar. No. And that picture of him looking like a gorilla? No. That was an embarrassment. What does it say? We are all witnesses. That's all you are. Think about it. They're telling you. You do not experience. You witness others having the experience. And you live through them as if it was yours. I wouldn't give a rat's ass about LeBron James. Huh? Or Charles Barkley. Or Tiger Woods. 
All of them are the ones making the goddamn money. They're the ones driving the cars. How the hell do you give a damn about them? Why? Because you've been induced. I don't want to. I don't give a damn about what they do with their money. I can give a rat's ass where they go. And every time you look on the television, oh, Britney said this. Oh my goodness, what happened here? All that gossiping bullshit since we became feminized. Now this is not to deal with my sisters because again, you just like we brothers got seduced by the okie doke. Next couple of weeks up in New York, I'm dropping it on the feminists and I am not going to pick it up. <laughs> Sisters, you have fallen for the last 20, 30, 40 years for a hypnotic entrainment program called feminism. And this equality bullshit is another part of the mind fuck methodology. You are not equal to me. And sexism, for all of you feminists, and all of the rest of the people who use the lexicon of the parasite so that you can have something to call me when I act like a real man holding on to my real man. <laughs> call me sexist. I am a sexist. What is a sexist? A sexist is a heterosexual. Now marinate with that. <laughs> Think about it. I mean, they don't give you a chance to think because they define what a sexist is to you. But you tell me what they say a sexist is. Come on, shout it out. You've been conditioned enough. All of y'all got programmed. What is a sexist? Somebody who oppresses women. That's the favorite one. But what's the main thing? Prejudice. Prejudice against the sex. Is that all y'all got? That there's not two sexes, that we are all. Equality. And that men think they're superior to women. No, I don't think that. I think I'm compatible to women. I love women. I love my women, I love my black women I love them to life I have made a fool of myself Over black women And it's hard to get me to make a fool of myself I don't care, I don't mind making a fool of myself Being who I am as the man But I am the direct authority And I don't give a rat's ass if you don't like it, and I'm telling you, brothers, if a sister don't like it, leave her. I see maybe one or two of y'all clapping. All of y'all. See, equality is homosexuality. I ain't a woman, and I'm not going to act like a woman for you. I'm not following you, you following me. You're not walking in the door before me because that's what the white men used to do to make sure that whatever's behind there ain't gonna fuck with him. Now that's symbolic only. Understand that when they're playing the gender game, it is to destroy the distinctions that gender has. In 1996 at the Women's Convention in the Women's World Convention in Beijing, China, the number one protocol that they wanted to reach was the destruction of all gender distinctions. They wanted to remove from the social lexicon such words as father, mother, brother, sister, girl, boy. They wanted to remove it. Remember I said that your reality is basically the words you speak into reality and how it reflects it back to you. So with the destruction of the distinctions, you have nothing more than slaves from a... The destruction of 
Your reality was to destroy the males, which is why they began an outward attack, an overt attack against the masculine principle towards the end of the 60s going straight through the 90s. All you heard about was how bad men were, how low they were, how bad they were pigs and they were dogs. Men just think with their dicks, and that's all they are, you're pigs. Yet still, when I look at Maury Povich, I'm watching these young girls passing through and find out whether that was their father or not. See, I don't have the, the jaded glasses whenever feminists talk to me. Feminists run from me. Because what I did over the 90s and the, and the early 80s and 90s, past the 90s, I began giving the argument to the brothers that the brothers didn't have to counter the feminist bullshit rhetoric. When feminists began to introduce lexicons of hate against men into our society, no one knew what to say against it because women can out-argue men. <laughs> They'll just start to argue and I will say, well, then fuck it, I'm out of here. <laughs> So they needed to give things to women because women can argue from an emotional point rather than a logical point when their feelings are invested in the argument. And they will stop remembering things that have no issues with what you're talking about right now. And so understand that it would be necessary for you to start bringing up all the pains of that woman from the past experiences with men, then give her a platform from which to argue with you with all that ammunition. But then when I began to decode and deconstruct the female mind in the book, The Wounded Womb, which by the way, Sister Tassili helped to give me as far as the words, the name of the book was. Thank you, Sister Tassili. <laughs> We had to deal with that particular argument so we now know how to deconstruct the argument of the feminists, and which is what I'm going to leave until my next lecture in New York, which is going to get me even more in trouble with women. But that's all right, because you see, it takes some time to marinate. I have a saying, I say truth cuts, but sometimes it takes time for you to bleed. You may feel the pain, and don't know that you've been inflicted with something yet. But sometimes, somewhere along, the evidence begins to show you why you were in pain. Because if I was speaking the truth to you that you already knew, and it was something you all overstood and understood, it wouldn't be painful. The family structure was man, woman, child. If you have a real good man who ain't fucked up in his mind by the society, because remember, they start destroying them from the time we're seven years of age, so that they are dysfunctional for you later on. And why do you think you as sisters now are excelling in college? Well, we've been given the chance. Wait a minute, when did you ever not have the chance to go to college? You could go to college, you could do whatever you wanted, but now they structured the education system so you could excel without the need of using specific educational criteria as what was used before for men. They completely destroyed the way to teach boys how to learn. And they, they changed the education system so that young girls excelled because of the way they were learning. Not what they were learning, but the way girls learn as opposed to the way boys learn. And they began to force boys to learn like little girls. And little boys ain't sitting still for that. That's why in New York there was a 65% dropout rate of boys. Because the system was structured for them to be dysfunctional. And their consciousness said, fuck it, I'm going out to create my own society. Right. And what do they call that society? Crips, blood. See, we did what we were supposed to have done. Structured a society. It's pathological, but it was a society. They have a system of rules, a system of initiation, a system of, of tears. And that's what men do. We structure societies. And once the society is structured, the women come in and they flourish it. They make it grow. They give it continuity. That's gone. So now that you have rendered us, because you want to be equal, you've rendered us insignificant as men. That's why your jail has 2.7 million men in it now. We are all witnesses, vicarious experiencers. What's a witness? One who has seen or heard something. 
Hmm? A witness is one who signs his name to a document for the purpose of attesting to authenticity. We are witnesses to what? He could dunk a basketball? Hmm? Let me ask you all a question. Are you the player? Did you sign the contract? Are you on the team? Are you the coach? Are you the referee? Huh? Is your name being announced by Marv Albert? <laughs> Reality is an orchestration and manipulation of semantics. Your reality belongs to a conceptual hypnotist. They win. They lose. They draw. Not you. They are ranked. They are drafted. Not you. They seek trophies. They defend titles. Not you. They go for the gold. They seek the prizes. Not you. They are the contenders. They have the opponents. Not you. They are the record breakers. They are the performers, not you. It's their performers, they, their game that you're looking at. You co-sign their reality as your experience. You co-sign their reality as your experience. And so, you are in a program that consists of words and definitions that have no meaning other than as markers that identify and legitimize their speculation of reality. It's their game. So you see the words, player, coach, referee, court, championship, tournament, World Cup, team, competition, sporting contest, score, ranking, ratings, title, trophy, opponent, competitor, rival, adversary, victor, winner, defeat. Wimbledon, leader, captain, three-point basket. Where the hell do you think all these words come in to define their reality came from? It wasn't from you. And it's reinforced on our own little basketball courts. These semantics don't belong to you. You are playing their game. You think that it's just a game of basketball. It is you more and more conforming to a reality. And you won't understand what I mean until about another six months after you begin to see it process itself into your reality. The control triad, the Vatican, the monarchies, and secret societies, they play with your mind. They play with your mind by naming those who play their games to entrain you so that you are continuously participating in their reality. You have the Duke Blue Devils. You have the New York Giants, the Minnesota Vikings, the Tennessee Titans, the uh, Kansas City Royals, mm -hmm. the Kansas City Chiefs, here's your Vatican, St. Louis Cardinals, the Texas Rangers, the Pittsburgh Pirates, what's the Pirates from? Skull and Bones, Oakland Raiders, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, all of them fly what flag? Tennessee Oilers, mm -hmm. Phoenix Suns, Los Angeles Kings, the Magic, Wizards, the Ravens, Eagles, Spartans, Seahawks, Steelers with an A, Patriots, Rams, huh? Aries, Falcons, the Hawk, Horus, Haru, the Saints, the Reptilians, the Kings, the Rockets, the Warriors, the Rays again. You're dealing with padres. What is another word for padres? Fathers. You're looking at them reinforcing their reality because it's them that own these teams. So every time you look at it, every time you participate in it, you are now participating in an entrainment reality. A recognizable face like Muhammad Ali around the globe. Where is he now? Pushing underwear commercials. They're supposed to be a great man pushing underwear commercials. I'm saying, like Muhammad Ali. So you see him here, and who is his master? Easily. You can see it. This is a caricature, a meat puppet. You live through him. One of the greatest ballers of all time. He was the best exhibitionist that that particular game of theirs caught your attention and kept it with. So you love to watch him orchestrate and play for you, actually for them. 
But what you were watching was a caricature because you ain't seen nothing or heard nothing with that notoriety yet or will ever. But it is you who are witnesses. You do not participate. You are in a vicarious experience, and the word vicarious means secondhand experience. You are essentially not enjoying the fruits of his playing. When he left his black woman and he ascended the mountain to success. <laughs> huh? You did not get into that with him. And remember, the three of them that play together is who? Michael Jordan. Who else? Magic Charles Johnson. Barkley. Magic Johnson. And Tiger Woods. They hang out together. And all of them, all of them have taken a step down genetically. <laughs> You do not buy the cars and own the super $350,000 cars. You do not own the home up on St. Thomas's Mountain Hill there with him. You are just there for him to laugh at when you pay for them goddamn sneakers. And he keeps re-signing the checks. Somebody keeps re-signing those checks for you. And what do you have? You are not Exceptionally first hand experiences, you are nothing more than vicarious experiences. You are not participants. I don't give a damn how much these clowns dress up, how much you want to see them glitter and glow. The real things going on behind that glitter and all that bling is these children that are suffering to bring that bling to them. So, all of this that our children are hypnotized by, and I'm seeing, I hope you young people in the hip hop community are seeing exactly what it is that brought these jackasses into, into being. And to know that essentially there is an, a mechanism and a machinery in place. And it's called, there's a, a guy who wrote an essay called On the Origin and Influencing uh, uh, of the Influencing Machine in Schizophrenia. This guy named Tosk said, there is the schizophrenia influencing machine. It's the machine of mystical nature. The main effects of the influencing machine are as following. It produces as well as removes thoughts and feelings by means of waves or rays or mysterious forces which the patient's knowledge of physics is inadequate to explain. In such cases, the machine is often called a suggestion apparatus. Its construction cannot be explained, but its function consists in, transmis uh, in, tra in the transmission or draining off of thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. by one or several persecutors. It produces motor phenomenon in the body, it produces erections and seminal emissions. It creates sensations that in part cannot be described because they are strange to the patient himself and in part are sensed as electrical, magnetic, or due to air currents only. These are some of the things that are going on in your reality. So what is reality? The mindfuck methodologies of the parasitic elite says that reality is the orchestration and manipulation of semantics. <laughs> Thus, we are linguistic prisoners trapped in a speculation. Therefore, the only way that you are rea your reality is described to you is through the linguistics. Now, they trap the linguistics by giving you the meaning of those languages, and through the meaning of that languages, you have nowhere to go outside the meaning that you've been given. Which is why metaphysics is so important, because it begins to help you to recognize and then define the reality outside of the box that they gave you to function. We are perceptually manipulated by the power of the spell. What do you do with words? Yeah. Ah! Ah! You don't even hear yourself talking sometimes. Spell this word. That's what you do when you talk. So when they give you words and they throw it into the lexicon, they are casting a spell over you. So you begin to learn to spell the language of control. 
Researchers have discovered, pay attention to this, have discovered that under stress, the brain will convert nerve energies into messenger molecules, which then in turn direct the endocrine system to produce steroid hormones that can reach the nucleus of various cells, causing them to change how the body's genes are written. Listen, they change the way that your genes write out the way your body is supposed to function. These genes will then direct the cells as to how to make a variety of molecules which are used in growth, metabolism, sexuality, and the immune defensive systems. In other words, the mind can rewrite genetics. This was the secret that helped get the Monarch Mind Control Program scientifically legitimized. Overstand that congressional testimony, listen to this. If you think this is a joke, listen carefully. Dr. Jose Delgado, and that's Delgado, actually Delgado, Director of Neuropsychiatry at Yale University Medical School on the congressional record, huh? Volume 118, February 24, 1974 said, listen carefully, we need a program of psychosurgery for political control of our society. The purpose is physical control of the mind. Everyone who deviates from the given norm can be surgically mutilated. The individual may think that the most important reality is his own ex existence, but this is only his personal point of view. Listen to this line. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. This is the beginnings of what you're going through. This kind of liberal orientation has great appeal. Therefore, we must electronically control the brain. Someday, armies and generals will be controlled by electric stimulation of the brain. 1974, peeps. And then that leads us to this. What did Steve Biko say? Which is why I am focusing in on the tenets and the protocols of mind control. Right. Today, once we understand the system in place, you'll see. Now we get to the godfather of the mind control paradigm that we're functioning under in 2000. His name is Sigmund Freud. Overstand and get to learn about this creature because all kinds of demons started coming from this bastard. That's who he is. This is who he is. He is a creature, essentially a creature without any feelings. He put into place different monsters that never existed in the mind of humanity. He defined how you think today. And this guy on the top is why the Batman movie was so significant. When he played the Joker, did you look at that movie? It was a serious game of mind control. He played the Joker. I like Jack Nicholson's funny ass thing before, but this one was a psychopath. Complete, absolute agent of chaos. From the time the self-conscious, listen carefully, here's where we start getting really deep. From the time the self-conscious, called the soul, re-enters the confines of organic matter, the brain it animates is told by way of words, gestures, and behavior how it should view the world how the concepts of reality that anchor a societal mindset should govern its life and how it should look upon these anchors as inherent, instinctual, God-given commands. So what they're telling you is that when a baby is born, and the Russians are experimenting with this, they have children that have been isolated completely from, from society, all the world, and they are growing up in a non-interactive society. They are looking to see what happens to the human soul when it does not have any preemptive information 
to brand it and to staple it into a reality. And these children are reading minds. That, that there it is, the Vin Diesel movie that came out. The one that he began to talk about when he went up there because it was the nuns that got them in there, in that place. So you have to understand that they have these people that they are getting ready for tomorrow. Not you, them. But there are second and third meanings or formalized conceptual subtext to every word, gesture, and action we hear, interpret, or act upon, every word we use. The consciousness synchronizes and reality manipulators continuously use these key words but are very careful not to use their synonyms to reinforce their speculation of reality. So they will use specific words without using their opposites to let you know that there is another variation on the theme. So you will get certain words to entrain you, but then they won't give you the opposite meanings to those words so that you can go and find the opposite reality to what they're programming you with. We have been psycho-spiritually infected with a virtual virus comprised of lockdown semantics and syntax. And the disease that perpetuates your delusion is the forced redefinition of your unconditionable reserver, uh, observer. Now, the observer is where we are going to study now. This is where we're going to start getting deep. Because you are not the body, you are not your thoughts. You are the observer of your thoughts. Okay, marinate with that. You have been made to believe that the programs they placed in your thought that has become a loop that's called your memory is you. Because that's all you've been learned to reference from. But if you were to still your mind one day and say go into a meditation and try to find a still place, you'll find all that cacophonous noise going on from all of what they downloaded into your system. But when you begin to see it for what it is, and you remove yourself without judging what you're looking at in your thoughts, once you remove yourself from the judgment of the thoughts, you're no longer attached to them. You are taught to judge their right and their wrong, which means that when thoughts come up about somebody you hate, some things you don't like and so forth, the observer has been trained not to have an indifference to it, but to actually judge it as good or bad. When that happens, you're exercising their reality. So now we have to find the unconditionable observer when we want to understand how mind-controlled we really are. It was Sigmund Freud, listen, Sigmund Freud and Carl Gustav Jung who created the concept of the so-called ego. Here's where we're going to start getting to, to meddle. Because everybody keeps talking about their ego. It's bullshit. There is no goddamn ego. I'm going to show you how, how they played you. Here's where the control paradigm is. The ego is a doppelganger, hmm, or double, to take the place of man's mental, individu neutral, individual observer. The individual observer, the one who can make up your mind for you from an organic perspective, is what they call the ego, and what they tell you, you must suppress. Listen, they created the concept of the ego as a doppelganger to take the place of man's neutral individual observer, to circumscribe, to encircle and thus incarcerate the free will of the individual and by default the whole masses. All this for the purpose of predisposing and preparing us for what the Illuminati had in store, that being to destroy the foundational superstructures of individual free thought by co-opting and undermining the neutrality of reason. Wow. The ego is you acting upon what is organic to you. 
but they have marginalized your ego because sometimes your ego is giving you the correct information now because you have been thought to think, hmm, taught to think that you got your ego tripping. Yeah. In fact, we all are. Because if you were to remove the word ego, you will find that Freud destroyed the neutrality of reason with his redefinition of free will as the ego, thus decommissioning and devaluing the true validity of the neutral, self-perceiving, self-conceptualizing individual observer. These elitists invented this term to steal away and gave de facto control of the individual's observer to the second order parasites of the Illuminati who were determined to suppress humanity's free will in order to blood suck from the heightened energies of fear and anxiety generated by victims existing within their dysfunctional speculations of reality. So understand that because they have now marginalized the natural re reaction of your, uh, uh, your ego, which is your free will, it is creating physiological disturbances that they can psychologically manipulate by putting semantic names to it, calling you sick in need of suppressants. Hmm? No one studies free will in psychiatry. They study the ego. This is something that is kind of difficult to understand at the moment. If you don't, it will start marinating. With his redefinition of the individual neutral observer's free will, he then perfected theories by which to further control the parameters of free thought through concepts like splitting the ego into fragments where he invented subcategories or particles as offshoots, each one to be blamed for quote, problems generated by unresolved dichotomies of the mind. So whenever there are dichotomies of the mind, the psychiatrists give a name to those dichotomies that the free will wishes to make an organic assumption on. But you are not allowed to make it because they have defined the parameters through synchronicity that you must now follow so that you are marginalizing your thinking and thus remain a slave. There is no ego. There is only free will. There is only free will. We got to get out of the concept of this overblown attention to ego that we're studying about all the different behaviorisms that are the reaction to this sick paradigm that we're living in. Understand that the European is the one who created the conditions that we live in, and so thus, naturally, you are going to revolt against it because it's pathological. Anything that's pathological will enlist a natural reaction to it. So just as you drinking poison or eating wrong food will enlist a symptom, living in the thresholds of Western civilization, it is no measure of sanity for you to be uh, 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 functioning properly in a sick society. If you feel you're normal inside of this madness, you're sick. The people who are healthy are in the institutions. They're the ones with the straitjackets. Think about it. What is it except a reaction to the sickness that we live in today? And you all are so anesthetized and so drugged out by the reality you've been given that you really think that you're functioning normally. You're sicker than the guy in the institution. There, brothers and sisters, if you look upon that map right there in the sky, we are sparks of the living light, spiritual sojourners having a physical experience. The ego is a perceptual illusion of the observer created by our interface with and participation in the third density framework of matter. That's who we are. We are creatures essentially of light. 
And we are the free will of the Creator because the Creator in creation is will in exercise. So if you are exercising free will, you are in touch with the Creator. But if you believe you are functioning with an ego, then you are in the entrapments of this parasite who weaves a web to make you believe that your reaction of free will and your actions towards free will is somehow a disease that should be curtailed. Understand that I have come to a place now where I begin to look at the dichotomies. What the hell is a black Greek? <laughs> Come on, speak on it. Now we have a lot of excuses. Everybody gonna say, yeah, well, the Greeks were first black. No, they weren't called Greeks. You may, if you want to call yourself Etruscan or Minoan, yeah. But Greeks. Okay, but I want you to look at that. I want you to look at that because that's how they harness. Remember the synchronicity. Remember the patterns of inevitability. You get the children to believe that they're stepping up in class when they are organized. The mind becomes real funny when it believes it's being initiated. Oh, I'm getting something special. I'm becoming something special. I'm being initiated. I'm going to become this, and I'm that, and you're not. <laughs> so understand, they already have implanted the elitism in you. But remember, we're dealing with spiritual energies, and that we're being with words as lockdown frequencies. Hmm? So when we start speaking about black Greeks, we are speaking about how the Illuminati create an undetectable, total mind control slave. And they start with the college. They start in the colleges. In fact, they start even before then. So let's investigate what the Greeks are about. I know they're going to hate me. Y'all going to hate the kid, and I know they're Greeks sitting among us, but I've got to do it. Oh it ain't because I hate you, it's because I love you. This is not hate. Okay? I don't got no time for hate. I don't hate homosexuals. I don't hate lesbians and feminists. I don't hate Christians. I don't hate Muslims. I don't hate nobody. I got no time. That's too much energy. What I am is a town cry. If I see something that just don't look right, and you give me a microphone, I'm going to say something about it. It's in my nature. And it's not because I'm going to say something about it because I don't like you. I don't like what you got on and your breath. And, hey, that shit to do with it. <laughs> Everything you see me put up here, I take nights. Sometimes I don't sleep for two days. I defy anybody to not sleep for two days and be on their ass researching. When it's gone up, the sun came down, the sun came up, the sun went down, and I didn't know what time it was. Right. Understand that this is not from any kind of personal issues I have with anybody that I'm about to discuss. I am looking at the detrimental thinking patterns that have been created in our communities and what is bringing us down spiritually and taking us away from the projected path that the Creator itself had given to us to follow. Somebody will say, well, who the hell appointed you? Nobody appointed me. If it doesn't make sense, then tell me where it is. I ask feminists to step to me and give me their side of the equation. Nobody want to step up. I ask Christians to step forward and tell me whether or not this Christian uh, entity, this beast called Jesus Christ, existed. They, they, ain't nobody stepped forward yet. They can't because he never existed. And one of the popes said, this is a profitable illusion. This is a profitable myth that we have created called Jesus Christ. It's been real profitable to us. Understand that we are not, I don't care anymore, as Brother said, um, uh, uh, Brother Griff said. It's, it's, you can't care anymore. It's not about this. It's about this. And what it is that you're passing on through this. Black 
Greeks. Now, I came upon this quote. Now listen carefully to this, people. This is deep. Brother said, it was Brother Purnell. He said, alpha men display Greek love. Alpha men, this is very important, peeps. Alpha men display Greek love. We're all in this together. Without them, there is no us. If we do not keep our history, huh? In that intact, nobody will. One. So, alpha, alpha men display Greek love. I can hear Barry White now. Listen carefully. Let's go to a book that says the Greeks and Greek love. This is a quote. Classic scholars James Davison offers a brilliant, unblushing exploration of the passion that permeates using homosexuality as a lens. Davison shreds, sheds new light on every aspect of Greek culture, from politics and religion to art and war, with stunning erudition and irresistible wit, and without moral judgment. Davidson has written the first major examination of homosexuality in ancient Greece since the dawn of the modern gay rights movement. What exactly did same-sex love mean in a culture that had no word or concept comparable to our term homosexuality? Mm -hmm. How sexual were these attachments? When Greeks spoke of love between men and boys, how young were the boys? How old were the men? This is in this book. What's it called? Okay. With refreshing candor, humor, and an astonishing command of Greek culture, Davidson examines how this passion played out in the myths of Ganymede and Cephalus in the lives of archetypal Greek heroes such as Achilles, Hercules, and Alexander, in the politics of Athens, and the army of lovers that defended Thebes. He considers the sexual peculiarities of Sparta and Crete, the legend and the truth surrounding Sappho, and the relationship between Greek athletes and sexuality. Let's go back to that again. Alpha men display Greek love. See, even if they don't understand it, they are being entrained. Remember the reality is created by the words that you semantically implant and of course the rituals that go in to reinforce it. Okay? Overstand. So let's move on a little bit further to examine Alpha Greek love. Let's go to this book called Male Love, a problem in Greek ethics and other writings. Author John Simons wrote one of the first essays in defense of homosexuality in the English language called A Problem in Greek Ethics in 1883. A follow-up essay in 1891, A Problem in Modern Ethics, includes proposals for reforming anti-homosexual legislation. These essays were widely read by an underground of homosexual writers and continued to be secretly published and distributed decades after his death. Some of his other personal writings and letters were finally published in the late 20th century and of great interest to historians for the candid descriptions of an quote, unspeakable sexual culture which existed against the social law of his time that retar regarded this love as abominable and unnatural. Oh, really? So now we are the ones that are off to it. So now, what did the black Greeks say? Well, the black Greeks say, you know, we are proto-Saharians. And that the so-called Greeks were called first the libico Thracians, the Pelagasian people, the Achaeans, the Cadmeans, the Legles, the Carians, and the, the Garamantes, the Thracians, the Deno, the, 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 the Danaos, the Cadmeans, the Black Amazons led by Queen Melanippe, 
the uh, the Ethiocretians uh, and the Mycenaeans. Now, all of these are, according to them, black people who were Greeks. But then, why are they calling themselves Thracians? Why are they calling themselves by the common terminology that was given by or is now being reinforced by the European? And he has put all of the different terminologies into the Kemetic. And of course, we see all of them were part of that elitist organization. Everybody up there were Greeks. Isn't that interesting? Everybody who has made it in the society has been Greeked. Now you know Steve Coakley, baddest, one of the baddest code breakers yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Running down about his complicity in his yeah. murder, yeah. saying that part of the, the part of the symbol, the signal, was for them to make sure that the person who were the not the friendlies was wearing ties. Notice that he wasn't wearing any ties. Okay, so you see all of the people that is doing anything were in some kind of organization that can be controlled by the beast. And of course you had stomp the yard, so everybody was in this, man. I mean, these boys were throwing down and giving you the show enough. Bang, bang. I like that, you know, that's good. That's, the ex that's exhibitionism. Okay, but what I'm looking at essentially is what it is that is being that is being displayed. What is this that it means? Alpha men display Greek love. We're all in this together. That's deep. Think about that. He's saying we're all in this together. Which means that when you define Greek love, what are we speaking about when we define Greek love? Is this the Greek handshake? Take a little moment with that. <laughs> I want you to see when these brothers talk about Greek love, it was a policy in that part of Greece. One of your more potent philosophers, as you will see in the next couple of frames. So, what's that? That was the Greek handshake? Was this hanging with the homeboys? <laughs> And what was this? Is this the Greek back rub? <laughs> Dig the brother. Black Greeks. Remember, you are sounding out metaphysical terminologies, and because you are harmonizing with that consciousness stream, when you use those words, you harmonize your consciousness with those words, and then you begin to entrain the energies that went along with the semantics that define that reality. The Greek back rub. <laughs> This is Big Brothers of Athenia. Socrates was a pedophile homosexual. Did you know that? Oh yes, you must have. In Greek society, especially during the Golden Age, most men seemed to be more interested in pursuing and having sexual relations with young boys. This is a quote from a historian than they were to having pursuing women. While this likely seems strange to a society where the majority of men find it repulsive to think of another man as beautiful, and where until recently homosexuals and bisexuals were looked upon or downed upon as being inferior, it was actually quite common and accepted in the ancient world of Greece. Pederasty, which is child molestation today, was condoned by the law. According to Plato, Legal and social norms did not clearly condemn or prohibit homoeroticism. 
Socrates also comments on the importance of pederasty in his own life. He says, my love for this fellow, his name is Agathon, another member of the party who is a beautiful young boy, is not an insignificant affair. Yet another member of the party who, uh, El Cibius, uh, Cibides, also who is in love with Agathon and tries to discredit Socrates when he says, Socrates is lovingly fixated on beautiful young men. He's always around them and in a daze. School days. Sparta developed institutionalized homosexuality in its military training, while other cities considered homosexuality illegal. These were usually cities Listen, far to the north of Greece, and were looked at as after being inferior to most cities, especially Athens. Porsenians, or Pors uh, uh, Porsenaeus, for example, in the symposium, denounces these other cities as being ruled by barbarians for considering these acts shameful by law. The reason this would be looked at as unacceptable is because there were two roles in sex, the active and the passive. In ancient Greece, the partners in a homosexual relationship were physically expressed or not, were, uh, whether, whether physically expressed or not, were rarely on an equal footing. Almost invariably, one partner, the Erastes, was dominant, and the other, the Eromenos, submissive. The active role was reserved for that of the male citizen in high social standing and considered the honorable one. The party that was strictly on the receiving end of the sexual act played the passive role and it was considered a dishonor for that party to be a citizen. Animal husbandry? That's all right, you can be offended. Or you could say this is too much for people to look at. But we adults here, even though you brought your children, this is going out. They got to see this. So what do we have this? What's this about? Hmm? This is getting together to see things uh, eye to eye. This is the story, overstand, that the legend of the cupbearer of the gods... I want you to look carefully at this because they have entrained us. This is Ganymede. The legend of Ganymede is what is happening today. Listen very carefully. Ganymede in astronomy is the largest moon of Jupiter and is the largest in our solar system with a diameter of 5,262 kilometers. If Ganymede orbited the sun instead of Jupiter, it would be classified as a planet. In Greek mythology, the constellation Aquarius was Ganymede, son of Taros, king of Troy. He was said to be the most beautiful human being in creation. Zeus fell in love with him, and changing into a giant eagle, kidnaps him away to Olympus, where he rapes him repeatedly. This is the story of Ganymede. This is the story of the Aquarian Age. The Aquarian age is the age of the homosexual. Pay attention, people. This is the depiction of the rape of Ganymede. He was supposedly anywhere between 12 and 14 years of age when he was abducted by Zeus. Now, sexually, Ganymede pleases Zeus so much, the story goes, that he let him live amongst the gods as his royal cupbearer, entertainer, and storyteller. The royal cupbearer, entertainer, and storyteller, and his errand boy. And to do that, he had to chase away the previous Olympian servant and daughter of Hera. Her name was Hebe. He is said to be the creator of the intoxicating drink that's called mead. Okay? Ganymede was also passed around as a boy toy of all the other male gods in Olympus. Now I want you to hold that thought. Who did we say Ganymede was? Aquarius. What was his function? Cup bearer of the gods cupbearer of the gods. Cupbearer 
of the gods. I want you to look very carefully at Snoop holding on to what has become popularly known as the pimp cup. And I want you to look at how he is dressed as a quasi-comedic priest. He is holding the cup of Ganymede. Overstand that this is not an accident. This is the age of Ganymede, not the age of Aquarius. The Illuminati is the one, the Illuminati is the one that is celebrating the age as Ganymede. You are celebrating the age of Aquarius. Understand that the word pimp means a procurer, a pander. What does a pander mean? The definition is a man who solicits clients for a prostitute. Someone who caters to or exploits the weakness of others to provide gratification for others' desires. Everybody is pimping today. And you are not a damn thing unless you are celebrating Ganymede. Now I completely lost it and said it's over for us when the Academy of Arts said that the theme song from Hustle and Flow Hard Out Here on a Pimp became the number one song. Pimps up, hose down. Overstand American Pimp and here are all your favorite characters. He has a big series. This fool is now pretending that he has a righteous family for you. Yet still he can give you that snake oil that's completely opposite to what he wants to show you of his family. Duplicitous. It's called mind control. So we then follow that there is no game. There is only control. Overstand that we are trapped in a vicarious experience entrainment program. You do not pimp. You do not have the palatial mansion. You dance to the piper's tune. And that's it. He bears the pimp cup. In this, the dawning of the age of Aquarius, Ganymede, does Snoop or any of the other rappers and their loyal fans overstand the occult significance of their bearing the Ganymede pimp cup? Do they understand what it truly means by the pimp cup and what it means? We see young brothers and sisters, everybody now is carrying the cup of Ganymede. And, and pimp has become the Eucharist that is now being served out to everybody. He is telling you that this is the age where you can play macho and you can act like a man but forget even trying Now 
Now y'all supposed to know who this rapper is. I don't know who the hell he is. He, the, the whole argument on the net that one of my young people sent me and said is that this is supposed to have been a girl, but when the dude did the forensics, he had a mustache and Adam's apple. Understand that we are seeing, and again, I ain't hating homosexuality, it is a disease. And I believe that yes, you can be born with it because they can twist your genetics, fuck with your hypothalamus, and play you like that. You can make a homosexual, you can create a homosexual by decommissioning his hypothalamus. If you shrink a man's hypothalamus, he'll start acting like a woman. If you increase a woman's, she'll start acting like a man. So when they give you the soy, especially the babies, and all the other food products that have phytoestrogens and other types of estrogen disturbance in your body, you destroy the baby. So for instance, I say to my students that if you were to give a baby normally, if you were to give a baby a certain amount of bottles during a day, during a, day a normal day that you would feed the baby, probably about six or seven bottles. Six or seven bottles is equal to nine birth control pills. A little boy of one month is kicking out as much testosterone as a man of 21 years of age. Once you start giving him soy at a very young age, you are disturbing the cellular networks, the neuronal message services that give him his manhood, that allow his hypothalamus and his pituitary to develop to allow the testosterone to do its job of forming and qualifying all of the cellular structures within his body. The seeds of Ganymede. We are watching and we are seeing that the seeds of Ganymede have taken over. This man is a 33rd degree mason, 33rd and a half degree mason. And if you look down here, this is the scene when Will Smith gets caught in the bed fucking this uh, European boy. In six degrees of separation. Y'all need to get that to see who he really is. In fact, there is a woman who's about to do a tell-all who he used to call to solicit young men for. Everybody knew that, even Professor told you that. Understand and understand that we are watching essentially the seeds of Ganymede. Now, I was told by a sister who is one of my scouts on the uh, internet that no heterosexual man should ever take the chance time to look at this movie, this, this series. Because it will completely destroy your perceptions, you will begin to either condone it and see it's all right, because that's what they want to do. They want to knock down your resistance, natural resistance and aversion to that. They want this to happen because it's automatic birth control. You have to remember they have to decommission three to four billion people on this planet. So homosexuality is essentially a weapon. Now, the people who are homosexual sex, I am completely offended that you're, you're, you're diminishing my humanity. This is the arguments now. You are taking me down so that you could hate me. And this hate, by saying that what I am is wrong, is seeding hate. I'm not saying what you are is wrong. I'm saying that whatever it is that you are within your mind and you believe in your mind is twisted. It's twisted because it's unnatural. Unnatural because it is not what you were created to be. Now, I'll check this out. 
They say, well, I was born this way. Yes, well, if you were born in another society that had its common sense and its reasoning operating correctly, you would have had a birth defect. Think about that. Because design denotes function. Design denotes function. It means that the Creator would not have given her these or that unless it was for a purpose. And a 10 second to maybe a 30 second nut is not the purpose. Design denotes function. It means that if I have a divining rod, my design was of another man. I don't care how you twist the logic to make me believe that love can be expressed in many ways. Yes, I can love my brother, but I don't think it's love to be looking at the back of his neck, trying to penetrate and exit. Now, homosexuals know that something is wrong with that, and they have a backup. They have been given the language to defend it. But let me tell you something. I don't give a rat's ass how you try to legitimize the actions. You can love your brother asexually and be a person that is non-sexual and become the most creative person on the planet by what you do, by what you say, by what you write. But to tell me that your bestial acts, you can call me what you want, homophobic. What the fuck does that mean? I ain't afraid of no homos. Homophobic. I'm not afraid of any man or wounded man. And I'm not afraid of the truth. I'm not perfect. I am totally fucked up. And I admit it. And that came because I am now and I am still a recovering Christian. <laughs> At this point, I have been 45 years sober. justification and all the reasoning I know you can't out reason me I can out argue you, you can give me all the arguments you want about hating I don't hate anybody, I ain't got no time to hate hate is really something where I act upon my, act, my feelings for you I don't act upon it, I'll just speak on it and I'm speaking on this because it is very important today they are allowing our children to believe that homosexuality is something that you should just try in a passing and just go ahead and do it and come on, it's alright try it, it's okay it's man love I don't care what you think there is always going to be a dominant and a recessive in relationships even in lesbian relationships there's a man and a woman so no matter what you think, the energy that is supposed to channel through me as a man, if it's channeling me as a man and it channels a woman as a man, it's still channeling a man. But because her plumbing is screwed up, does not mean that it is not the same energy. It is being misused, it is not being properly channeled. The 
The wiring is off. If your wiring is off, you can't get the proper signals, you get a distorted picture. Well, the homosexual's body is wired wrong. Now, I know they're going to hate me. You can hate me. Go ahead and hate me. But the logic I'm asking you to listen to, the reasoning involved. Now, they call us breeders. That's the new curse word. Where we used to call them faggots, they call us breeders. So now is something wrong to be a breeder. Trust me, as much as they hate us talking about them, saying that we hate them, you should hear the way they talk about you all, heterosexuals. You all now have run into the closet. They run everything in the society yeah. today, yeah. all the way up through government, yeah. entertainment, yeah. everywhere. And if you don't bend over and take it in your ass, you don't get to where Puffy is today. Right. Puffy and them be holding these parties where they be getting these young brothers who are looking to make it in the business walking around half naked on yachts that you don't know about, selling off these young brothers. And one of them wrote a book called Hiding in Hip Hop, where he outs all of that. And they even have people who get the boys for them and let them know, and they say, well, we can't be outing them. Why this brother went and wrote that book? Don't they know that the men in there have families? There ain't no such thing as the down low. That's bullshit. You are a homosexual. And you are fronting. You are perpetrating at being a heterosexual. Six planks of Illuminism. Abolishing of all monarchies and all ordered governments. Abolition of all private property. Abolition of inheritance. Abolition of patriotism. Abolition of the family. Hmm? Through the abolition of marriage. Codes of morality. And the institutions of communal education for children. And the abolition of all religion. Now, I can deal with that. <laughs> he stated... By this plan, we shall direct all mankind in this manner, and by the simplest means, we shall set all in motion and in flames. The occupation must be so allotted and so contrived that we may in secret influence all social and political transactions. Their goal was, is, to divide people politically, socially, sexually, and economically, to morally weaken countries, and to create a one world government where all religion, all love of family, country, and loyalty to sovereigns now are to be annihilated. The Ten Planks of the Communist Manifesto. I'm not going to go through all of it, but as the brother was talking about, confiscation of property and all immigrants, uh, of all the immigrants and rebels. Anybody who does not want to be with the government, you'll get your stuff confiscated. All rights of inheritance are going to be taken away from you. Heavy and progressive graduated income tax. Does that sound familiar? What's his name? Your boy Obama is a communist. He is a socialist. Extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state. That's why they began to homogenize. You begin the government is now buying into all your corporations. They are turning it into uh, um, uh, Soviet Union West. Everything here is to structure a new reality. Again, none are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. There is no game, only control. We are trapped in a vicarious experience and trainment program called Operation Mindfuck. Where did we see this before? School days. School days. Wake up. I don't care if you're heterosexual, homosexual, you're all going down the tubes. It's going to become a free-for-all in this country over the next 10 years. Remember, it's not until 2020 that we're going to see 2020 and everything clearly. 2012 is the opening portal to beginning that stage of reawakening for our people. But we have to wake up now. 
all of what they're going to be seeing, you're going to notice that they're going to take clips out of this particular lecture, and they're going to cut it up and tell everybody that I'm homo hating. They're not going to give you everything, the precursors to everything that I'm speaking about. They're going to tell you that I am dealing with hate and that, that this is a whole new society now. It's open. Everybody can be a free-for-all, but you're seeing more and more of heterosexual tenants and heterosexuality being suppressed and pushed into the closet. That's somebody trying to call me. Don't worry about it. And what I'm saying to you is that there is going to be essentially a catharsis in this country. You are going to be persecuted as heterosexuals. Trust me. As heterosexuals, you are going to be persecuted. You're going to see more and more television. More and more of the television shows going to have yang, butch females running and controlling everything. And you're going to see more and more of the men cowering and acting like, uh, 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 uh. even the big burly men are just going to step <laughs> off. Because these yang-ass European women who want to be men, who said back in the 60s, that ain't nothing but macho uh, proselytizing, that chauvinist machoism. Well, they're doing everything we're doing now. Yeah, we're not quite. They're coming close to it. But like I said, beloved brothers and sisters, stop playing. Please stop playing and stop being played because essentially that's what we are right now in a mind-melding conceptualization a synthetic synchronicity that is putting us all in danger. But again, I would like to say to you, thank you for the time that you have given to me, the short time that I had a chance to be able to speak to you. If there are any questions, very quickly, I would then entertain them. Again, thank you very much for your attention.